Hi there, this is Grooving in G, and I'm coming back to you with the third part in my Audio Finder tutorial series. I just want to clear up a few things from my last tutorial at the start, and then we'll get into lots of new stuff in a minute. So, just briefly, I want to clarify kind of what the favorite spin is and just elaborate on a few things I talked about last time. So, the favorite spin works like a temporary playlist where you organize and collate stuff in Audio Finder and then you drag it to other playlists or you've tagged it and that's all you wanted to do with your files. So it's kind of where you, you bring stuff in from your folders if you're clicking and dragging stuff in like this and then I'd say I'd tag this all up as a drum, as claps and then maybe I would want to drag them to a folder so I'll drag them into my tutorial list and then when I quit Audio Finder this favorites bin will get wiped. So that's how it functions by default, as just a temporary list. One of the things that's useful about the favorites bin is when you're working in this tag view and you want to get back to the other view, to the sidebar lists and groups view, you and drag files over there, you haven't really got an option here. So what you've got to do is add these files to your session's favorites bin, then go back over to the other side, and now you can drag files anywhere so it kind of connects the, the tagging side and the sidebar group side of Audio Finder. One thing to note about your favorite spin is in the preferences window here you actually have a few options where you can get Audio Finder to save the session's favorite spin automatically when you quit Audio Finder and you can have it ask you if it, if it wants to save so if I just go and quit now uh, it'll ask me, hopefully it'll ask me, ah, oh, it's done this to me before. Now, I'm just going to say here that I've had some problems with this in the past with it not asking me um, to save, so I'm not 100% sure these will work for you every time. What I would really suggest is to think of your favourite spin as a temporary playlist and to always make sure if you want to keep your files to drag them out of the favorites bin before you quit Audio Finder. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about briefly is tagging. When you first start Audio Finder, you will have a bunch of default tags, which is quite comprehensive, but you will probably want to add some of your own tags as you go. Now, what you've got to watch out for is if you've already tagged stuff up, so I've connected these files to the tag name acapella. If I now change acapella to say another word and start adding emojis like this, if I do this and then add emoji, so I get my, my character view and I can drag them in, that's now completely changed this tag name. So now when I go in here and I search for acapella, nothing shows up because it's it's connected to the word a cappella, not with the emoji after. So you have to be careful not to suddenly start corrupting all your files by changing your tag names after you started tagging. What you want to do, ideally, is create your tags initially, all the ones you think you're going to need, and if you want to use emojis, great. And then not change the file names. You can keep adding new ones all the time if you think of new stuff to add but you just don't want to start changing the names of them as you go. So you do have to watch out for that one. So you don't waste time having to go, go back over your work. So I now, because I, I, don't, I don't want that emoji in my tag, I'll just save that. And now when I go back to my tag window, back to acapella, it'll have all the stuff I had in there before. That's, that's just one thing about tags, just to not get caught out changing tag names. Yeah, another thing I want to quickly talk about with tags, which I use all the time, is in edit here, uh, in the bottom right you've got this little settings wheel, and you can actually save templates of all of this metadata. So if you're filling out, you know, five different columns of this stuff, then you can save, you can save this as a template. like this, and then when I click on other ones, I can add this tutorial template and then it'll add all of this data in. 
A typical one for me is when I have drum breaks. I have a tag where all my drum breaks go, and then I just sometimes I like to know if I've I'm the one who's sourced the break, if it's come from a vinyl, kind of details like that. So I use this notes area here to write extra bits of information in. Yeah, that's kind of all I really wanted to talk about there and just clear up a few things on tags. Okay, I'm just going to talk about some organizational stuff. Firstly, these columns here, you can use this column, this column view option and you can choose whatever you want to have. If you want to have bits and creator, you can add all these extra bits of metadata. There's so many options. Where I put all my stuff is I use this notes window because you can type lots of lines and as much data as you want in. I use the notes window and then I kind of just use tags mainly and all the other stuff I kind of just leave blank and only use it if I really want to highlight something that's come from a specific source or it's a sample that I really love and I use all the time. This is kind of where I store all my drum breaks that I collect from vinyl and from the internet and all kinds of places. You can see some, some of them I put dates, some of them I've put where they've come from. I'm using genre to give some description on the types of snares and then some more description on the types of drum breaks. Yeah, I think if I show you my drum break collection, this might sh kind of give you an example of how powerful Audio Finder is when you've been using it for a long time. So I've got all these drum breaks and I've kind of just listened to them and allocated them into genres. And now whenever I'm making a hip hop song and I want to use a drum break, I've got all of, I've got 297 of the, my favorite drum breaks I've listened to, which I've, which I think would sound good for a hip hop song all in this massive playlist. I've also got my star drum breaks, which is like my absolute best ones that I've found. You can get such good collections in here. And if you put the time into this program, it really kind of rewards you. It's a lot of manual work. It doesn't do that much automatically for you like a lot of these other sampling programs that are coming out nowadays do, which have more features, kind of like Audio Cortex, which is yet to really be integrated fully i would love to have a column in audio finder which shows this part of audio cortex which is showing you what the ai algorithm has detected where it says sounds like i would love to be able to have that column in audio finder at the moment in the view options there's no option to integrate it so it's kind of like he, you've got this awesome ai that you're not fully integrating into Audio Finder. So hopefully we'll see that at some point in the future. Okay, so onwards we go. I just want to talk about another feature of Audio Finder, which is how well it integrates into Finder and to just a general workflow with music on a Mac. I have it set up so whenever I click on a file, it'll automatically open. See, it's, it's saying iTunes is the default there, but it's not. When I double click on a file, it automatically opens it into Audio Finder from my desktop. So to do that, you go, you click on any audio file, you go info, and then where it says down here, it says open with, you change, it's saying that is iTunes app is the default, but you change it to Audio Finder and then you click this change all button here and you click continue and that will mean all your audio files will now open straight into audio finder so that's the first thing that's really really useful following on for that you have this finder selection mode where you can toggle it here and what it will mean is every time I highlight a file in my finder it will play it in Audio Finder. So if I turn a bit of volume on. Really cool. Now what you might notice is that there is a little bit of latency there. I don't know, it's probably, you know, 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds. It's enough where it kind of takes a bit of the snap out of Audio Finder. So that, for me, makes me generally, if I'm using this waveform view, I will generally use it in Audio Finder. So I'll double click on a file. And then the trick I showed you in my last tutorial is this show in browser. So if you learn the hotkey for this, which is Shift Command B, this is now open. This folder 
in Audio Finder, and now I can scan through it really snappily. So while whilst I do like the Finder selection mode, I find myself using the actual browser in Audio Finder a lot more because of that latency. You can turn off this waveform preview, which will improve the latency. If I turn, if I go back here, it does improve it. You know, and that might be good enough for some of you. It's quite similar to if you're using Finder with your spacebar and tapping through samples. But one of the beautiful things about Audio Finder is it's really snappy. Yeah, personal preference for me is to double click the, the file and if I want to go in there, show in browser, and then I'm into that folder. Another thing you can do is that you can detach the quick look and you can then get rid of your main browser you can have your finder selection mode on and you can kind of, you know, have a really small window and be navigating through using your finder kind of outside of audio finder. So you can kind of use it just as an extension. If I load this back up and this, this top button here means that this will always stay at the front or on top. You can click that to dock it again. One thing I think would be quite handy to show you is an example of what happens if you lose some files. So when I was doing my tutorial earlier, I noticed that I had, I think I had a drum break missing. Yeah, so I've got this drum break and you can see I, I did a bit of reorganization a while ago and I moved a couple of files onto an external hard drive and it's now lost this file. This is where Audio Finder gets a bit tricky. You've got a couple of different options that I'm going to show you. Firstly, I think, which is the, what, what I usually do if I have a few files, is I will just use Spotlight Search on my Mac, which is uh, Command Spacebar to bring this up, and I will find that file. So if you're using the uh, Spotlight Search, if you find the file here, you can drag it, in from this area, or if you press Command and Enter, it'll actually open the lo the folder location of the file. And then I'll drag it in, click on this, remove. So now I've put that break back in. Now the other way, I've dragged these in. So now I've got some files in, and I'll show you what's gonna happen here. I drag them, let's get rid of everything in here. favorite spin and I'll drag them in this tutorial list and I'll tag them with the tutorial tag so I've tagged them up they're in a list now if I take this folder where the original samples were where I brought them in from where Audio Finder is reading them and I say I changed the name of this folder now these samples are all going to vanish because the audio finder can no longer find them. What you can do, it's sometimes you'll be faced with loads of files like this. What you've got to do is go into your, in under library, metadatabase manager. Okay. And then you go validate. And now this might even find some files which are not the ones that we, that I just moved that I haven't gone and reconnected yet. So yeah, it's found a few things, but here I can see these samples which have been unlinked. Now what you can do is go automatic relink. You can kind of ignore this little pop-up and then you need to choose a root folder where you think the files have gone. Now if I just select perk one and choose that, this is gonna quite quickly find five files. Now didn't like that did it so we're going to go again the audio finder as a program has little quirks and glitches and sometimes you've got to try things twice so that did work that that actually has relocated the files but what i was trying to show you was that it, it doesn't it doesn't bring them back into a list so those files if i drag them in whilst it has reattached the tags that i did it's reattached the metadata to those files, it has lost them out of the list. The problem here is that when files become missing, 
So if they get moved from your original hard drive location, if you're doing some reorganizing and then they, they lose their link in Audio Finder, you can reconnect the tags and the metadata, but you will they will get deleted from your sidebar lists. And, you know, the only way I know to get them all back in is to actually go through one by one and find each sample, you know, to go say, I found this sample, put it there, go to this one, remove, and work through it systematically, dragging all the files back in that you had lost. Yeah, that's another thing to watch out for. Problems that you might run into, and maybe this will be a good source of information. Another thing, now this is something which will hopefully help lots of you, is whenever you do a lot of work in Audio Finder, a lot of tagging and organizing, you want to save your work. And you can actually back it up. In library, you have this backup metadata and configuration. So if you click this, it backs up the exact current state of Audio Finder as it is now. I think maybe you even just run this, this, this backup. But a good little trick that I've done is on my desktop, I have this alias folder, which takes me to another folder kind of deep in my hard drive where I store all my backups and then I have them all dated. So rather than every time I back up Audio Finder, having to rummage around my computer, you go, I've created it. So to create an alias file, you simply right click, make alias. And an alias file is just linking you. It's not, it doesn't take up any space. It's just linking you to the location. So if I double click this, it now opens that folder location. So that's pretty handy. And then I can drag this back up. It is very important to back up your stuff because sometimes you just will hit delete and you'll lose everything out of a list you've spent ages creating and there's no way to get it back. But there is a way to get, get it back if you back up the database. So always back up. One final thing I'm going to talk about today is the Audio Finder won't save some of your lists, icons, and it won't empty your cache properly. If you quit it with the X up here, what you've got to do actually is come up to Audio Finder and quit Audio Finder here or press Command Q. For whatever reason, it likes to be told to quit rather than the exit. So I know it wasn't probably the funnest one to listen along to, and so I think in the next one, I showed you a little bit of my folders and my tagging system and stuff. I think in the next one, I might just do kind of like a practical workflow guide of how I actually use this program because I can go through all these features of Audio Finder like you would if you read the manual. But I think it's more useful if I actually show people the, the, you know, the way I use this program and how it functions for me. I might not be the best music producer in the world, but I have been using Audio Finder for six or seven years and I'm quite proud of my library and the work I've put into this program. And I think it can be useful for some other people to see. Let me know if there's anything you want to see from my next video on workflow. I might even kind of just make a song in Logic and show how I use uh, Audio Finder as a sampler and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think that's good for now. Thanks for listening.